All right. Every time we go to sleep, we get the opportunity to dream. Some of those dreams are pleasant. Other nightmares might spring us from slumber. But both types of dreams can be messages from our subconscious. That's where author, dream expert, and hypnotherapist Kelly Sullivan, what a name, Walden, a.k.a. Dr. Dream, comes in. She's here to tell us how our dreams communicate to us. Kelly, can you tell us how do our dreams speak to us? Our dreams are always trying to get our attention. They're trying to help us. They're, they're, often they speak the language of symbol. And the stranger and more outlandish the symbol, the more exclamation marks we can put behind those dreams. And the nightmares sometimes occur in the, in the most vivid ways because they're really trying to wake us up to make a change in our lives. Mm. Mm. And sometimes they physically wake you up. <laughs> yes. uh, why do we have dreams? Oh, that's that's a big question. We we dream, I believe, on a very basic level level, just to to be sane. Um, it's it, there's a scientific um, research that was done on depriving people of their REM stage for a couple of days, and they displayed psychotic tendencies after mm -hmm. two days of no REM. So, they, it's believed that we dream in order to process the glut of information that we take in by day. And if we, it's kind of like laundry. If you don't do your laundry on a regular basis, you just kind of you you. You can't even sort your way through it and then you have no clothes to wear so it's <laughs> it's like that our dreams are helping us to sort through but then they're also helping us to process more deeply and helping us to make sense of the things that happened to us in the past and then they're also trying to give us a strategy for how to survive and thrive in our lives beyond what our rational conscious mind could ever cook up so you said nightmares are the unsung heroes of our subconscious so does that mean nightmares are a good thing Yes, they're a good thing. I mean, it's in the same way that an indicator light on your car is a good thing. It's a bummer to find out that your oil is running low, but wouldn't you rather know than find out the hard way when your car just stops moving? So the nightmares are like that. They're trying to get our attention. They're trying to get us to course correct, to, to veer more in, into balance because we've, we've kind of gone off it. So we need to look at our nightmares as it's an indicator of something that we need to change in our lives or something we need to come to peace with in our lives. So you're finding something positive, finding opportunity in an obstacle of something that may have scared you. I want to ask you, this is a little off script, but I'm curious if you've looked Great. into this, that, you know, if you say, some people say, oh, I don't dream. Are they just not remembering dreams that actually did happen because they're not getting enough sleep? Or what is that if I wake up and there was nothing? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, there's never nothing. I know that's a double negative. That means there's always something. <laughs> so it's scientifically proven that we all dream between three to nine big dreams every single night. The issue isn't whether or not we're dreaming. It's whether or not we are remembering our dreams. And it's easy to not remember the dreams if we start thinking about social media or the news or what's my to-do list today we're, we're literally switching channels in our brain from the, the the very subtle level of our dream all of a sudden to the boisterousness of our waking life so the trick is to stay on that easy listening station of our dreams and pay attention to that write that down first before we turn toward our waking life so how did interpreting nightmares help you handle the waking nightmare, if you will? Uh, that's a great question. So one of the things that I learned early on in my in dream work is to look at every dream as every nightmare as an unfinished dream and that it's the job of the dreamer to finish the dream, meaning to in your imagination or in your journal or in a conversation with a therapist or a friend to discuss the ways that you would finish the dream if you were lucid, if you were in control and you, you were the director of that dream movie, how you would finish it in a way that would give you back your power. There's also a point of view about dreams that everyone and everything in the dream is an aspect of the dreamer. And I found that by practicing this for years and by teaching it to other people, I started to notice that the rules of both, th both of those rules apply to our waking life circumstances mm. as well. We can change the outcome if we don't like the way it's going. We are the director of our lives. 
and everyone in our life is an aspect of ourselves. There's no other, there's no one out there. There's no big they that's doing something to us. We have a lot more power to be able to co-create our lives and change things. We don't have to be, I mean, yes, difficult things happen. Just like in my, the title of my new book, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. I wrote it because I've had my share of crises. It's true. We have, we were victimized by circumstances, but we don't have to stay that way. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. We ran out of time, but we could talk about this all day. Mm -hmm. So we will make sure people will find your book and check you out because that is fascinating. Yes. Kelly, thank thank you you. so much for having me. Happy to have you. you.